All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Asus Tough Gaming F15. All right, so this one has a broken screen. We're going to be replacing it. The exact model is Tough 506H, so TUF 506H, okay? Um, and then they have a full, I guess, more model number, FX506HEB-IS73, all right? I don't know why they have so many different model numbers on here, but... Yeah, that's confusing. All right, anyways, we're going to be using a JAS-1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, if you're replacing the screen, you can technically remove the screen without opening it, but to be extra safe, you want to disconnect the battery first. If you don't, there's a good chance you'll fry the backlight circuit. All right, so we're gonna undo all these JAS-1 screws. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that. On my desk in the pattern, I remove them. So we got four going along here near the hinge area. Then we got three going along the center. And then we got four more going along down there. Right, again, keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, also, if you can't do any of that, it would also help if you watch more of my videos because uh, YouTube sees that as you're interested in seeing more than one of my videos and then they'll share them to more people. All right, so, so far, um, the two back here are longer than the rest. And then I'm pretty sure these four down here are probably gonna be the shortest. Okay, the ones along the middle and the corners seem to be about the same size. But again, it's always a good idea to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. Actually, these two are probably, these two in the middle down here also seem to be about the same size. So, yeah. All right. And I'll actually show you the screw layout in a bit. Let me see. Okay, so this screw actually stays in place, and that's to help remove the bottom cover. So let me sh show you the screws we removed. So basically I put them all aligned like that. So that's how I organize the screws, okay? So hopefully that will help you kind of organize yours. That's how I do it. Okay, so now that we did that, again, this screw stays in place. So that way when you undo it, it creates a gap here. You can get a pry tool in there. I just use my fingernails. While I'm pulling it, I'm gonna slide my other fingernail along the edge here, okay? And be careful because they don't have any, um, there's like no plastic along the USB ports and stuff. So you gotta like go in there separately, okay? All right, looks like that's all it went. Then we're gonna go along this side and go along the front. Same thing, I'm gonna run my fingernail along the edge as I pull it up. Again, you don't have to use fingernails, you can use plastic pry tools, okay? Whatever works for you, but I find this works easier. Okay, we're gonna continue pulling up and just sliding my fingernail along there to pop these clips out. Okay, it looks like the edges here are a little more difficult, okay? So let's see, how can we get these out? Uh, where does it pop out here? I'm assuming it follows along here, but I'm not 100% sure. So this is gonna be I'm getting my fingernails under here and then I'll push with my thumb and that is popping out. I do hear some loose plastic bits in there. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna go under here as well. So at this spot, fingernail and again I'm just pushing with my thumb on the back as I kind of pull up there okay and it is popping out not completely but it is okay now we got that so we're gonna lift up here it's going along this edge and then I guess we only have that one corner left so since that's left maybe we can kind of wiggle this as we kind of lift and there we go here's what the inside of the bottom cover looks like okay so here's what inside of the laptop looks like we're just gonna put this here, okay? All right, the main thing we gotta do is disconnect the battery. Give me a second, I need to check some messages. Okay, okay, give me a second. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so the battery connector is right there. Let's go ahead and disconnect that. All right, it looks like there's only two screws here. We'll see if there's more, but right now I only see two. Okay, this one and that one. All right, can we lift it? Oh yeah, there's only those two screws, interesting. All right, so be careful because there's this plastic here. All right, to remove the battery, let me actually zoom in and show you this close up. 
So the connector here, it has these wings on it. Usually at the wings, I'll get my fingernails there and I'll kind of just wiggle the wings just like this slowly to walk it out. Once you get it out enough, you can go ahead and pull the battery up. All right, battery model number, is there one here? Capacity, rechargeable battery pack. Oh, the model number is covered by this tape. I don't know why they did that, but they covered the model number with this tape. So you might have to just go by the ASUS model number if I can't get this off cleanly, but let's see. Looks like it's coming out relatively cleanly. Okay, and here you go. So the battery model number is right there. Uh, B31N1726, all right? That's the battery model number. So if you need a replacement battery, there it is. We're just going to tape this thing back down. Oops, I want to try and get it as smooth as possible. Okay. All right. So there we go. Battery is removed. Um, next step, since we're removing the screen, let me zoom out. We're going to open up the laptop carefully. And then we're going to press and hold the power button here for at least 15 seconds. This will drain any residual power and will make it a lot safer to work on. Okay, so we'll hold it for about less than 10 more seconds. A few more seconds. Okay, and again, um, this is a very important step. It only takes a few seconds. There's a good chance you'll fry your computer if you don't do it, so just do it. All right, got the speakers here. One is here. It's just held in with these rubber things. You can actually lift it out. It has these, but I'm not gonna take it out. This wire runs along to this speaker and then they both plug in right there. Again, this one has like the wings on it. You grab and wiggle and you can pull it out. There's a little heat spreader here for this um, thing. You got the keyboard connector here. If you wanna know how to remove these, I do have videos showing how I remove them on a lot of other computers, but basically there's these latches. You flip it up and then you can pull it out. Keyboard connector, touchpad, trackpad connector, uh, USB port connector on this side here, okay. Um, it looks like that's all it does, the USB 3. You got an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD slot here, all right? It is underneath here, um, but once you remove the one screw, it should pop up slightly and you can pull it out. Okay, there's a little dust on here, so I'm gonna clean this up a little, because we might as well since we got this open. All right, <clears throat> same thing with this side. A Little bit of dust there, might as well clean it up. Okay, and I'm gonna Pull that dust down. Okay. So I'm cleaning the other side as well. Okay. CPU and GPU are soldered to the motherboard. GPU is right here with the memory there. CPU is right here. Okay. They're both soldered to the motherboard. You can't replace them. Then there's two fans. I'm not going to mess with those uh, because, again, the only thing we need to do is replace the screen on this model. Um, there are two sticks of RAM here, okay, so if you want you can kind of move this out of the way But we're just gonna pull one out So pull the two metal tabs to the side and then it can pop up and then we can go ahead and grab this out um, Shoot, okay, so they put this thermal stuff all over it. So I don't know what type of RAM it is uh, I'm pretty sure it's DDR4 or PC4 RAM But I don't have a way to confirm the exact speed and everything um, so yeah, PC4 or DDR4 hopefully should be okay with that. I don't think they have DDR5 RAM out yet for these laptops. I'm not sure. They might. Um, but yeah, you can usually tell by the position of this notch. Depending on the really old RAM, the notch will be here. Then it keeps moving further and further over here. But you can see this notch is getting close to the center. Okay. Anyways, we're going to put this back in. If you want to know for sure what type of RAM, just look it up on Google. I'm sure you can find something. Um, but again, I don't want to pull this out completely and then risk damaging their computer when the only issue is their screen. Okay, you also have another M.2 PCIe NVMe slot here. So if you want to add a second SSD, you can. There's the screw already there. All right, you got the DC jack charge port connector here. It goes underneath the hinge. So if you want to take it out, you do have to undo the hinge screws. You can lift the hinge screw up and then you can... Pop that out. You got the LCD LVDS cable running along underneath here, right there. Okay, also has the little flip latch. Fan connector there, other fan connector here. And yeah, that's pretty much it inside. Oh, there's this connector here, which it says LED something, but I'm assuming this is probably also for the power button. So yeah, be careful with that.
okay? Um, we're gonna carefully open it up. If I didn't mention already, that's the keyboard backlight connector, okay? We're gonna carefully open this up. All right, this one has two screws here hidden underneath to remove the uh, LCD panel. So I'm gonna get a small flathead screwdriver. I have a uh, flathead, this is a one, I think one millimeter it represents. It says a one, but anyways, um, we're gonna go in at one of the edges. You can use like a needle or whatever small enough to get in this gap. So we're gonna try and get in the edge of one side and then we gotta kind of just like push it into there and shove it over. Oops. This is kind of tough to get out. So get it in there and then try and raise this thing up. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got that plastic bit out. We'll set that aside. Okay, again, these little pieces can be pretty tough to get out. So just be patient. If there's one side with more of a gap, you can start from there and that kind of helps. But uh, let's do that. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got both of these out. There is adhesive on the back, so make sure you don't accidentally get it like all dirty or it's not gonna stick. You might need some new double stick tape. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. We're gonna continue with the JAS-1 screwdriver and remove the two screws here. That one and this one. All right, now that we got those two screws out, we're gonna pop the bezel out. Let me double check if I'm getting any messages real quick. Give me a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oops, let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so you can see we have access to this whole bezel. You wanna pull up from the middle, from the inside, and then kind of push in towards the center. And you can see the clips are kind of popping up. So you just wanna carefully do that. It shouldn't take too much force. You'll actually feel the clips pop up. We're gonna go along the inside and basically do the same thing. There is adhesive holding this stuff together. So be careful, go slow. Okay, um, I actually popped this out one time to check the LCD panel model number. So it's gonna be a little bit easier for me. Uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna pull the screen all the way back now. Okay, when you get down here, same thing. You gotta pull forward. Um, again, there's a lot of adhesive here. So if it doesn't come out easily, there's also a black layer that's attached to the screen. You wanna make sure you don't rip that out. So I push with this flat tool. You can use anything that's thin and flat to get in there and basically push that down as you pull this out, okay? So you don't want this layer here to separate. So you wanna push that against the screen and then pull this away, okay? Just like that, carefully working your way across. Again, I've already done this once, so it does come out easier than it normally would. So keep that in mind, okay? Then you have this piece, which it seems like it's stuck here, um, but there's a trick. Like if you get in, let me see if I can zoom in on this to show you a little bit better. Okay, so if you get in here and you pull up, oh, what's this broken piece of plastic? Okay, so if you pull up from here, you're basically making this rotate up that way so that this piece can go up. So you do wanna make sure the screen is all the way open and then you pull up from here. So I'll get my finger in here and pull up like that, okay? Same thing with the other side, or actually if you got one side, you can actually kind of slide it off to the side here, but if not, thumb here, and then pull up like that with your finger, you just pull it up like that. Okay, and there we go. You can actually see the adhesive here. If it folds over on itself, you can kind of unfold it, and then if it won't go flat, you can tear off that piece. It doesn't really need all this adhesive there, so you can kind of just tear that out, you see? And then you can just leave that flat. But uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. If you want, you can check all around the bezel to see. Make sure it looks okay. All right, and yeah, so this looks fine. Good, 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 good. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we gotta get out the screen. To do that, there are some um, stretch release adhesive strips, which can be a little bit of a pain to remove. Uh, you might have to use some tweezers or needle nose pliers to get this out. Okay, it goes in right under here. Again, I already removed these once, so it's a little, it might be a little bit different than what you see. But, um, yeah, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get under here. We'll try with the tweezers first. So I don't know if you can see between this part and here, there's a little black plastic tab that we can kind of pull up and out. Tweezers don't hold tight enough, so I'm gonna use the needle nose pliers once I lift it out to grab and then pull on this, okay? And this you wanna actually pull per, uh, parallel to the screen. So what I do is I pull it down like that,
grab it, and while I'm stretching it, I pull this down like this, okay? So that way I'm pulling this towards me, and then I'm pulling this straight down. And as I do it, I keep pulling it towards myself to get that to kind of keep going parallel. When it's too far, uh, stretched too far, you can grab here, let this stretch back close to it, and then you can hold from closer up and just continue the process. Um, you want to try and avoid to get this stuck to itself because if you can, you want to reuse this. Um, they do give you, uh, sometimes with the new screens, give you some replacement one of it. Um, if they do, then that's good. You can use that replacement one. But I'm going to grab here again, let it stretch back. And also this adhesive is going to be a little bit longer than when it was installed from factory because it's stretching out. So keep that in mind when we go to reinstall it. Um, we might have to snip off some excess, but there we go. That's what that thing looks like, and you have this little black tab there, okay? So we'll set that aside. Okay, and we got that on both sides, so we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. Over here, okay, same thing. There's the little tab. Oh, where to go? Okay. Oh, I think this one, when I put it back, it kind of got sucked in a little bit, so... Hopefully I can still get it out. Okay, there we go. Try and grab that, same thing. Pull it straight down, just like this. And pull this towards me as I pull this down here. Okay, and we'll just keep doing that. If you try and pull straight back, it won't come out and you're gonna end up just tearing this, so make sure that you are pulling it straight down like this, okay, with the screen, following the screen, All right, then we'll let that go back in and continue again. I might have to keep doing it this way because it's already getting easy to pull. Okay, and there we go. All right, so there we go. We got both tabs out. Also, if you end up um, getting some stuck together, don't worry, you don't need the full strip length. You can actually um, just cut it shorter and then just use less of it. All right, anyways, now that we got the whole thing out, let me zoom out again. Okay, so now that we got all of that out, let me zoom out more. Okay, now we can actually tip the screen forward. So get the screen and then we can lay it on its face like this okay we're gonna have to get this out it might help to get like a little plastic razor blade or something um, and then we're gonna kind of scrape the adhesive here to kind of peel it up so let me zoom in here okay so we'll get that and just scrape that up <clears throat> this adhesive usually is a little bit difficult to get out but there we go and carefully wiggle this. Oh, looks like the clear one underneath also is getting stuck there. So we do need to make sure to lift that up as well. Okay. So try and get underneath that clear adhesive layer. Peel that up as well. There we go. And keep the foil layer down if you can. Because that's not actually part of it. Actually, is it peeling up? Is it part of it? It shouldn't be. That's weird. Uh, what is going on? Okay, well, I guess we can peel the foil with it because it doesn't want to stay separate. But if you can, you can leave the foil layer down because that one um, normally is just staying on the screen. Okay, anyways, after we peel that up, we want to get this out. So I get my fingernails at the corner edge of the little connector. Okay, and then I'll use that to pull it out just like that. If you're wondering, the screen model number is right here, N156HRA-EA1, revision C1. So if you want an exact replacement, N156HRA-EA1, revision C1. A lot of times, if you buy a screen, they're going to just send a replacement, like, compatible model. So keep that in mind. You might not get an exact replacement. And it looks like in this case, we probably have the same thing. They sent, like, an NV156, so I guess... You can probably use that model as well, NV156FHM-N4K version 3.2, but it's always best to get like an exact replacement if you can. All right, anyways, <clears throat> we'll get this out. So I tried to get an exact replacement, but they always end up 
a lot of time sending a compatible one. So, all right, anyways, we'll get this out of this blue baggie. They did ship it with the some replacement adhesive, but I'm gonna just use the old one because we don't really need to use the new ones. Okay, make sure this piece is flat. It's a little bit bending forward, so we want to kind of flatten it out. Be careful not to apply too much pressure or do it too fast. Okay, line this up. One other thing to check, a lot of times these um, connectors don't line up, so I'm going to line up the two screens and see, and they seem to line up okay, so we should be fine. We'll set the old screen aside. Okay, we'll get the connector here, line this up. I like to use my fingers back here to kind of tilt it down, okay? Then we'll line it up, get the corners in, <laughs> and then I use the this plastic tab to pull towards the bottom of it and click that in. Right, then I use my fingernails, pull at the corners of the connector to make sure it's in, and then we can go ahead and just tape this on. Okay, now that we got, got all of that in, we can actually power up the computer to make sure it's working. So what I'm gonna do, we'll take the screen here. For now, we'll just tip it, flip it back up here, make sure it actually fits in place, looks good. Make sure this cable goes into the right spot. Okay, we're gonna close this up, get the battery back in, and then we will um, power it on and see if everything's working okay. All right, so we got the battery here. Make sure this plastic is out of the way. And also, if you're getting a replacement battery, make sure the red wires are going towards the side over here with the SSD, and the black wires are going to the side with the RAM, okay? So line that up. You don't wanna flip it upside down. Sometimes they might ship it where it's all twisted upside down. Okay, line that up. Oops, I should zoom in. And then once you get that in place, just pinch both pieces together, just like that, to get it in. Get that back on top, zoom back out. Okay, drop the battery back into place. Um, are there any weird clips or anything? Not really, kind of, kind of not really, no. Is this a clip? No, it's not, so it just sits on top, okay. So I guess they just sit on top like that. All right, and let's get those two battery uh, screws back in. <clears throat> the one down here and the one up here. Give me a second, I need to make sure I'm not getting any calls or texts. Okay. All right, so we got the battery back in. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna see if it powers up. Okay, so we'll flip this back open I'm wondering why they have this giant empty hole here. It looks like there's plenty of room for a 2.5 um, inch SATA hard drive, but I don't see a connector here anywhere. Anywhere, so I don't know why I said anywhere. Um, this thing says HDD con, HDD, so hard drive connector. So I think on some models, they actually do have a connector here, but in this case, they're just using it for the backlight there. So that's kind of interesting. All right, we'll open this up <clears throat> carefully. All right, and let's go ahead and power it on. I do see the lights coming up on the keyboard. It's all flashing rainbow, the power light on the power button's on. <clears throat> I think the battery actually acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery on this model. So in the, if that's the case, yep, it will take a little while and I can see it came back on. So I think we should be good to go. All right, it's spinning. Um, now we just got to get the adhesive back in and all the screws. So let me, I'm going to hold this out of view real quick uh, while it boots because I need to shut it down. Oh, one other thing to do after getting a new screen, you do want to restart the computer one time to make sure that the thing registers the new screen properly. If you just do a shutdown with Windows 10 and 11, it doesn't do that. So yeah, all right, so we're going to wait. It's still starting up. Okay, it's showing like this snowy thing and it says 1249, which I think, is that right? It's actually 125 and it's April 18th. So yeah, the time got messed up um, and that's normal when the BIOS gets reset. Again, we did remove the screen. So we're gonna restart one time. So I did click restart. Hopefully it won't take too long to boot up. And I'll check right now because I got some messages from a customer, give me a second. Okay, it's still restarting. This is all part of the process, so hopefully you guys are able to follow along. It's 
still going. Still going. All right, starting up. The screen just went black. Okay, it's on. Give me a second. Sorry, sorry for all this extra time. All right, we're gonna now just shut it down normally. And then we're gonna put the adhesive in. Because the adhesive is extra long, there's a way you can actually use it extra long. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna pull the screen forward again. Be careful not to drop it. Okay, so we'll get that in there. Okay, so we have this whole length of black plastic where the adhesive will go, okay? And what I do, to make use of the extra length from it being stretched. First thing again, you do want to get that between the uh, metal frame and the plastic there. So we'll get that in there um, uh, between the hinge and this plastic so you have a way to pull it out. All right, then you'll stick the very top of it. And then since we're starting here, we're gonna now work our way over to the left, curl, uh, curving it like that. And then we're gonna work it back over to the right, okay? Just like this. Okay. Curving it over to the right and then curving it back over to the left. You don't really need to worry about it going all completely onto the plastic piece. So if you go out into this area, it's okay. Um, as long as we get a whole bunch of it holding the screen down over here. Okay, so we're curving it now to the right again, and then curving it over to the left again, and curving it back over to the right again. Okay, just like that, stick it all down. Good, all right, we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Okay, normally it would just go straight up and down. If you want, you can do that and just snip off the excess but uh, to get it holding as much as possible, I'm doing it this way, okay? So we'll get this back in there again, stick that side down, and then work our way over to the right, work our way over to the left, work our way over to the right. It went off a lot, so I'll try and get more of it back on. Okay, then back over to the left. Then back over to the right. And back over to the left. And then back over to the right. All right, there we go. Try and keep any like bumps or bubbles as flat as possible from the curve. There we go. Then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna actually hold on to the screen here. We'll flip this over this way. And we do wanna get the top edge of the screen in first lined up, okay? So we're gonna grab the screen, make sure it doesn't touch the bottom edges yet. And we're gonna line up the top edge to where it meets the plastic frame, okay? On both sides, get that out of the way. Okay, pull that up and then drop it into place. All right, and there we go. We got everything lined up. It's now stuck into place. We're gonna peel this protective layer off. Just roll it off like this. You don't wanna pull it straight up. You wanna roll it sideways. So that way it's not pulling up on the layers of the screen. Okay, so we're rolling it like this. There we go. Next, we'll get the bezel back in. Um, to do the bezel, you do want to make sure the screen is opened all the way. So let's rotate this. Open it all the way. Okay. And then again, the little tricky part is the little corners here, but it's a little bit easier with this. You kind of just get it lined up and you kind of rotate it to get it over the hinges and push it down. There we go. Then we work our way up the edges. 
Okay, now that we got that, we can actually go ahead and do the top first. Um, this time you push on the outside only. It's basically causing it to rotate up like how when we removed it. If you can't get it that way, you can kind of help rotate it that way as well. Okay, uh, but this one's kind of being a little tricky. There we go. All right, keep working your way around the edges here, the corners. Work your way down. Okay, click these into place. And make sure you push those in all the way. Go along the bottom here, click that all in. All right, and then work your way along the top here. All right, and if it forms a gap here that you don't like, you can actually get some new double stick adhesive and put that there, okay? But, uh, let's see, we'll flip this back over. All right. Okay, so just like that, stick that adhesive back down. And there we go. Okay, so we got that in. Let's go ahead and get the screws back in place. So we had one here. And the other one here. Okay, then we'll get the little black square plastic piece and just put that back over the screw hole. Okay, covered, there we go, and the other one, and this one, oh, this one got a little bit scratched, so it's kind of, eh. but there we go, okay, so we'll close this up, flip this over, just like that, okay, here we have that, I wonder if I can get a piece of that little plastic square to put a new one, but... There we go, we got this, line this all up, and then just click everything back into place. And that's pretty much it. You do push down and inwards at the same time. All right, we'll just get all the screws and we should be good to go. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if you can't do any of that, watching several of my videos also helps because then it tells YouTube that you're interested in my content. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I get all the rest of the screws back in. But that's all there is to it. All right. You can hear the clips are clipping in. I do want to make sure all the clips are in, but screwing them down does help. Okay. And we should be good to go. Let's get these last few screws in. Almost done. Last three. Last one. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this spike.